Hello and welcome to Artful Teaching, Joyful Learning. My name is Alana and I help educators and homeschoolers teach with confidence, ease, and a splash of creativity so that their children fall in love with learning. And today I want to share with you some fun, playful, hands-on way, ways to bring math learning to life. Now, in particular, we're going to be kind of looking at things through a Reggio inspired lens. And uh, what better way to do that than through the um, art of story and storytelling. Now, math is real life, real world problem solving. So the closer that we can bring uh, math problems to your child's world, to their universe, the more meaningful and significant that math learning is going to be. Math is not a means to an end. And in particular, if your child is doing a project or an investigation or an inquiry, as we call it, um, math is often a, a necessary tool in order for our kids to sort of figure out bigger problems. So connecting it back to the real world is so, so important. Now, one way we can do that, of course, is through the art of storytelling. Storytelling brings things to a whole other imaginative level. Story is fun. It's an engaging way to really captivate our kids' interests. Uh, and storytelling can be very, very concrete, especially when we go and start acting it out. And of course, stories are relatable, right? We want to relate the real world um, to our children's experiences. We want to um, bring in those, those really interesting math problems. We want to relate them back to our children's world and their own experience. So those are four really important uh, reasons to include uh, storytelling as part of your child's math learning. Now, how do our kids learn math? Well, they move through certain levels, going from the very concrete sort of one-to-one -one correspondence where things are very tangible. Um, you know, our children can manipulate things. They can grab onto things. They can group things together and take things apart. They move from that con concrete stage to the pictorial stage, whether that's through tally marks or little diagrams. And then finally, they move to that symbolic stage where they're actually associating a numeral, in this case, five, to a group of objects. They understand that that number five relates to this group of five objects, okay? So often we're very keen and eager to sort of give our kids those abstract kind of worksheets to sort of gauge where they're at. That's not in fact how kids learn math. They really go through that very concrete, um, sensorial sort of way of manipulating objects to the pictorial and then finally to the symbolic. And in terms of symbolic, that's of course, once our kids have an understanding of numerals and their values, then we can start to bring in the idea of, you know, addition and subtraction symbols. Now, here is one way that we can use our, and upcycle all of those holiday cards uh, that you've probably accumulated over years and years of holidays. I know that I can't bear to throw mine out or recycle mine. Um, so I hold on to these for many, many years. But one way that you can actually repurpose these and upcycle them is to create little storytelling puppets. Now, in this context, we're gonna create storytelling puppets so that your child can create, uh, so that they can tell math stories. But you can use these puppets for any number of skills in terms of, you know, story retelling in, in literacy, um, all kinds of ways that you can use the puppets. So what you'll want to do essentially is to just take uh, some of these pictures and have your child actually cut, uh, cut those pictures out. And using a popsicle stick, you'll just, um, you'll just mount the popsicle stick to the back and uh, a little piece of tape to adhere that stick to the back. And there you've got your little storytelling puppet. Now, how would I use these to tell a math story? Well, remember I said kids move from the concrete towards the abstract. So what you'll want to do is take one of these puppets. Now, the nice thing about using these uh, holiday cards is because kids can relate to them, right? They're often family members, whether they're cousins or aunties or uncles or friends. Um, your children are able to better tell stories with people that they know. So if you get one of these uh, little popsicle stick puppets made, you can then put it towards your little um, storytelling mat. And I like to have sort of a um, whether it's a placemat or a piece of paper, or in this case, a little play silk, 
Uh, but you can place that little puppet down and you can think of a story problem that your child might be interested in. For example, um, this little boy, Aubrey, uh, got three books for Christmas. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use some loose parts as our manipulatives, right? You don't need to go out and buy expensive um, math, math tools. In this case, we're just going to use some stones here as our manipulatives. So these stones are like little presents, little books that Aubrey got. So he got three books for Christmas. Let's count them. One, two, three. And cousin Zenon, cousin Zenon got two books for Christmas. So let's count out two books. We'll put them right beside him. One, two. How many books did the kids receive in all? So this is where your child could, you know, take those little storytelling puppets and then combine all of these uh, stones, all of the books together to make a group. So we're going to use a count and scoop strategy. This way your child will not lose count. So they're going to go, they're going to put their finger on each uh, stone and count them. So one, two, three, four, five. They got five books in all. Now, what another idea you might try if your child is ready for it is to actually attach the numeral with a post-it card. So here they're taking that understanding that this group of three books, this group of three stones is shown with the numeral three. Okay, and then I can go ahead and label that down below. And over here, we've got two, so I would make up a two and then we can label that group down below okay now you're associating that numeral with the group of objects okay so we're making those connections you don't need to worry about adding you know addition and subtraction um, symbols at this point it's a little early for that another way that you can use these uh and here's anna telling her stories with these little puppets behind the couch uh, another way that you can do this is with little magnetic strips so from the dollar store, you'll often find little um, magnetic um, sticky pads and you can just cut up those magnets and using a cookie sheet, an old baking sheet like this, you can create magnets with those uh, holiday cards. And once again, same thing, telling those stories with those, with those uh, concrete objects and uh, your child can then manipulate and move them around without the worry of them sort of falling and rolling off. I like to kind of keep things within sort of a boundary and that keeps our kids uh, thinking kind of contained in that zone. So there you have it, two ways to teach math uh, through story um, in a playful, very hands-on way that is also very age appropriate. I hope you enjoyed that session. And if you would like to see more of math, more of uh, language arts, science, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to create uh, some future workshops for you. Thanks for joining and we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.